Hi, my name's Keith Cooper and in this video I'm going to have a talk about screen settings if you're editing for print. Now I'm going to talk about calibration but also about how you set up your editing software because that makes a difference as well. There are quite a few factors which have some quite subtle, some more major effects on how your prints come out. And one of the typical questions I get asked, and I've written about this from years ago and I've got videos on it, is my prints are too dark, what can I do about it? Well, almost always the answer to that one is really simple, is that you have your screen set too bright. Um, now, there are many other contributory factors to that, but most people who've asked the question, it's turned out they've set the screen too bright. Um, so what do I mean by setting the brightness? Well. Um, if you're going to be doing editing, and this screen is set up for display here when I'm making videos, my main editing uh, setup is somewhat different to this. Uh, this is set up to look good on video, not necessarily for editing. Now, make that, that clear because I'll cover some of the settings that this particular screen is set to in a bit and why it looks so good on video. And that gives uh, a bit of a, a guide as to how come you could get similar looking effects when you're not videoing things and you're just making your prints you want them to look good. How can you match screens to print is the big question. Well, technically you never can because they're two different things. This has got light coming out of it. This has got light reflected off it. Likewise for any of the other prints around here. I mentioned brightness. Now, I'm using here, this one is a Color Checker Display Plus. Um, this was X-Bright, it's now uh, Calibrite. There are data color models as well. Uh, this is the calibrator I use on this screen. This, this one's a, a BenQ 2700. Um, this one's got hardware calibration. You don't need that. It just makes it very nice for setting things up. Um, the better the screen and calibrating, it all helps, but of course, all of these things come at a cost and um, I have no illusions that uh, most people do not need this level of kit. I'm a professional photographer. I produce prints. My, most of my work is not produced for prints, but uh, I'm a professional photographer, so I need consistency and quality and reliability in my setup. What about brightness? I mentioned that one. Well, you set that in the uh, calibration software. Typically, the software will give you a guide, an estimate of what to put. Some packages I've noticed in the past, they will actually measure the ambient light and suggest a setting for it. Um, I prefer not to do those. I don't like having automated bits in the setup. Certainly nothing that needs continual attachment of the device. This lives in a small bag in a, in a drawer somewhere and is taken out when it's needed, and then it's put away. Um, if you look after these, these will last for years. Um, if you're worried about the expense as well of one of these, if you're a member of a camera club, why not look at buying one for people to use, for members to use for the camera club? Um, it's a great way of doing color management, profiling, all kinds of things like that. Anyway, brightness. I would normally set between 90 and 120 candelas per square meter. This, the, the numbers you'll find in it. Um, quite often you'll see maybe suggested 120. Now in ordinary room lighting, 120 can be a little bright. And that, as I said, can contribute to your prints coming out a bit too dark or, or not looking quite how you want them to. So I've got my monitors here set in this. And when I'm using, doing editing in this room, it's not as well lit as this. It's lit for, this is lit for video, uh, which I'll come back to when I talk about color temperatures, I think. But um, I've got this set, um, this one here, I can't remember. This is around about 100, uh, maybe a bit more. It's set to match for yeah, the video shooting. Uh, set up. But on my main editing screens, I've got them set to 90. Um, that's quite dark, but it does mean I get pretty good prints. I'm, I'm used to it. What I would say, if you find that 90 or 100 is, and it's, it's not, these are, this is not precision stuff. If you find that 90 to 100 is too dark for the room you're in, then take that as a hint that the room is too bright for photo editing. Um, things like this uh, monitor hood uh, really do help in uh, working environments. The dark 
background around it refl prevents reflections and things. If you haven't got one of these, you could make one out of uh, artboard, uh, black coated artboard, put it together a bit of tape. Doesn't look as neat as this, but it works just as well. And at a fraction of the price of buying one, if it's not included with the monitor you've got. What about color temperature? People say, ah, well, you know, what are the default setting? Well, the default setting has been 6,500K. Notice that's, that's 6,500 Kelvin, not degrees K or anything like that, but it's 6,500K. And that's been pretty much standard for monitors. It's heavily influenced by older CRT monitors, but it's regarded 6,500. You may sometimes see it called D65. Now, D65 is technically not the same as 6500, but for most people's purposes, it's, it's, there's not much of a difference between them. Um, if you understand the differences between D65 and 6500, then I'm saying you're not going to learn anything much in this video because you should know all this stuff anyway. But anyway, that's great for web. You can assume that if you edit stuff on a 6500 screen, um, it's pretty good for general viewing, general computer use. There you go. What about if you want to do print? Does it do setting your uh, monitor to a different color temperature? Well, I find that because I do a mixture of print, rather than setting it to a low color temperature, um, and let's say 5,000 or 5,500, which I find a bit dim and you know, dark um, in normal use. Rather than setting at that, I'll find that setting it at say 6,000 gives you a better uh, view. Some might want to go for 5,800, 56, but it, it's really a matter of taste. And remember that when you switch monitor temperatures, it will always be far more obvious than if you switch them, go out of the room and come back in again. Our eyesight is incredibly good at adapting to lighting conditions. So um, this monitor is set for 4,000. Now that's as low as it will go. Why have I set it for 4,000? Because the lights I've got up here are set at 4,000. They're 4,000 um, LED bulbs. Um, I've got a lamp over here, which is the Siri one I looked at a while ago, which is completely adjustable. I can control the color temperature and brightness of my phone. That is set for 4,000. So I've got 4,000 over there. I've got 4,000 there. I've got 4,000 here on the screen. That means because I can adjust the color balance of the uh, camera that's recording this, this is um, an EOS RP, I have a, a white balance set in there. And that means everything balances. That's great, but what I would say, you think, well, why not just set the color temperature here to what it is in your room? Well, finding out what the actual color temperature is in your room is not as easy as it sounds. And personally, I prefer to keep it somewhere standard that's not influenced by the vagaries of whatever lights I've got switched on in the room, because this is not the lighting I use when I'm working in the office. I've got other lights for that. I'm not particularly bothered by particularly having special print viewing lighting or any of that. I've got a viewing cabinet if I need be, if I need to test things, but I use it very rarely. Um, I trust all the settings I've got. So I've got my monitors set for 6,000 over there. Now they're set for 6,000, they work fine. So that's a monitor set up. Here, this, because it's 4,000, I've set this monitor's brightness and I've set the lighting so that what you see here is pretty much what you see here. Um, and it, it works very well. Um, and if people watching my videos think, wow, Keith's prints look just like his screen, he must be good. Well, that's good. You, you keep on thinking that. It's actually a trick. Um, well, not a trick. It's knowing how to set things up properly has done that bit. But I mentioned also your editing software. It's um, before I became a photographer about 20 odd years ago, uh, my career was in usability testing, usability analysis, uh, human computer interaction, all kinds of stuff. So I did a lot of looking at screens and applications and you know, software then and looking at how we perceive things. Now, I also did quite a bit of other stuff related to organizational change and stuff, but that's of rather less relevance to photography. But what I've got here 
Yeah, I've got my pictures, I've got the setup here. I'm editing this. Now, this is an oldish version of Photoshop. This is CS6 running on this, this laptop. Um, I've got the latest Photoshop running on my other system, which I use for actual editing. But this works very well for display. It runs okay on this old laptop, so it's great. Um, I've got this set up here. Now, I've got the uh, uh, Photoshop here set for a gray interface. Now, I've noticed in recent years, and this is where my career, a previous career in usability came in, we looked at text contrast and all kinds of things like that. And I've noticed that in the last few years, there has been a much stronger emphasis on so-called dark modes or dark interfaces. Why has this come about? Well, it's because pictures on a phone, pictures on a screen, look better when they've got a black background. Um, they don't look so punchy when they've got a light coloured background. So um, design fashion has produced uh, software with dark interfaces. So you'll find this all over the place. You'll find that software is set up that you know, all your user interface has almost disappeared into the blackness. Well, to me, that is pandering to people who want to look at screens and want to look at phones. Now, I'm realistic enough to know that that is the majority of people looking at images. They don't think of prints. And this is why I said setting up screens and apps for print. If you're doing print, the print is not the screen. If you're printing your photographs, you are aiming to produce great looking prints. If you're going to show, sell these prints or do anything like that, it really does not matter one jot what they look like on screen. If you need to have a web gallery or something, then you edit your images differently, knowing what the gallery is going to look like. What sort of difference? Is it? Well, I say I've got a grey interface here. So you may be able to find in your editing app to be able to turn the interface colour off and get it away from having everything black. Because the more black there is, the more your image has contrast. That's why this picture here is printed. It's on a, against a black background. It gives contrast and depth to the subject, which are some tiny little dried flowers. That's a macro picture. Those flowers are only a few millimetres across. Um, I did that a while ago when testing. It was printed also when I was testing the Epson P7500 printer, a much bigger printer than I'd normally use. Um, but yeah, we've got, there's that. Here's how I've set things up. Now, this image here, black and white image against a greyish background. And I, I would just quickly mention, um, you can see maybe a few folders and things light blue folders showing through from behind. Ideally, avoid distractions on your desktop when editing. So that means if you have a desktop picture of your favourite cat or so, whatever, um, that's not good when you're editing pictures. Uh, our vision is adaptable, but it is influenced by surroundings. So if you've got a small picture here and you've got bright, brightly colored desktop background, I know you think it looks neat. I know you think it looks good. You really like the picture that you've got selected, reminds you of a holiday or whatever, or as I say, your favorite cat. But that is not conducive to print editing. Print editing thrives on bland. No bright colours in the background. So if I look at change the viewing mode of that, if I put a solid background, there we go, I've got rid of the, um, all the extraneous clutter, and I've got a fairly neutral, darkish grey background. Changes the look of the picture subtly. If I change it again to a black background, boom, we've got immediate punch. Now, it's the same image. Let me just cycle through them again. So there's the black background. There's how I might edit. There's a neutral gray background. And there's a black background. And if I have edited that to get that looking great, and I then print it as a normal print, let's say I mat it in a, in a white mat or something, I frame it, um, I'm not going to get the same impact I've got here. So, the background matters because this black, black background alters your perception of tonality. It alters it in quite subtle ways that you may not even notice. And it means that you typically will, if you edit an image on a black background like this, 
you'll be happy with it. Then, then when you print it, you'll think, oh, that's a bit drab, or it's a bit dark. Certainly if you've got this too bright, it'll come out a bit too dark. Why dark, why dark bright? If your screen is too bright, it opens up the shadows. So you see shadow detail. Then when you print it, there's much less tonal range. That all gets crunched up, those shadows disappear. So if you, bright, if you edit on a too bright screen, you see shadow detail that's unlikely to be printed. So on a, on a background like this, to get this shadow detail, now I know this print works because it's a print I made a while ago. Um, you need to be careful about shadow levels and highlights as well, but shadows are the bit that are mainly affected by when you, when you change your backgrounds and things like that. So uh, that's matting prints. If you want to take care of that, also your editing. If I just get rid of that, I'll just go to the other image. There we go, there's that print or, or part of it. That's with a black background and a grey background on the screen. And as I say, um, hopefully uh, these two will look fairly similar. Is this because I have, going back to what I said at the start, is this because I have some magical skill in being able to make my prints match my screen? No, this is because I have carefully adjusted the lighting levels coming out of this, the lighting levels in the room, the color temperature of the screen, the color temperature of the lighting, got them fairly close to the extent that these look quite similar. Um, it looks, as I say, if you want to assume that this means I really know what I'm doing and I can really edit stuff well, then great, I'll happily accept that. But as I said, this setup is done specifically for these videos. What happens if I was to edit on this screen without all this lighting, not on videos, under my normal office lighting or something? This screen looks absolutely dismal set up to 4000K. It really does. It looks drab, the colours, it looks too warm. It really doesn't look good. But here in this lighting, with this light here, the, the, the uh, Siri one set to the precise colour temperature, 4000K lamps up here, it all seems to match quite nicely. And in fact, because I'm sitting here in this room lit by these lights, my eyesight has adapted to the white balance of the room which just happens to match the white balance of the picture, so the picture looks great to me as well. Now, all those little factors, uh, put them together and they help you produce better prints more consistently more often. It's not about getting it right every time, that's not to me what colour management's for. It is about getting better results right first time more often and that's the key to it, that's why I take care with colour management. Now, I hope various items here. I'll put some links to some articles and related videos as well if you want to sort of follow this through a bit further. But um, that sort of sums up how I set things up. Now you will hear people with other suggestions, fine, try them. This is what works for me and as I say look I've got the match here so I must know what I'm talking about. Anyway, I hope you found that interesting and useful. Uh, thanks for watching. Please do subscribe to the channel. It is appreciated. And if you've got any questions, just ask. Thanks very much.